Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Seventeenth lecture of this course. The seventeenth lecture is on nanopharmacology and drug targeting. So, in this lecture, we are going to learn what is nanopharmacology and various nanopharmacological targets, and also how to target the drug to a particular organs. So, this nanopharmacology is a new branch of pharmacology, and it's gradually emerging with the application of nano science and nanotechnology. Okay. So, let us see the definition of nanopharmacology. So, it is a drug design and drug delivery to selected targets to improve the pharmacodynamics and kinetic profiles toward safer and effective treatment. Okay. And let us see the definition between the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So, the pharmacokinetics is uh, simply defined as what the body does to the drug okay. and uh, the pharmacodynamics is uh, what the drug does to the body. Okay. So, based on the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, the efficiency of drug get varied. So, let us see how uh, the nanopharmacology can be categorized. The first one is defining the targets, the next one is the uh, development of drugs and carry system and the third one is studying the target drug interaction and fourth one is monitoring the target drug interaction outcomes. So, let us see these in detail one by one. The first one is defining the targets. So, when you make a drug, it should exactly match with your binding site that is your receptor site. So, if it is not binding effectively, then the therapeutic efficiency will be less. For example, so if your receptor is like this, so the drug should go on exactly match with this, okay. And this is your receptor or a binding site, and if your drug is like this, it cannot bind with the binding site. So the efficiency will be less if the target is not matching with the drug. So the next one is development of drugs and carrier systems. So we can make a biocompatible and biodegradable uh, nano carriers which can deliver the drug to the targeted location. For example, we can use that human serum albumin. So this is a HSA. It is a one of the highly biocompatible biodegradable material. Okay, and we can load with uh, any kind of drug, and also we can target this HSA to the particular location. For example, if you want to target this nanoparticle to the cancer, we can add the cancer specific antibody so that it can go and bind only to the cancer cell and it can release the anti-cancer drug to the cancer cell. So, next one is the studying the target drug interaction. So, in this we will be learning pharmacokinetic interaction as well as pharmacodynamic interactions. So, under the pharmacokinetic interaction we will be studying the uh, how the drug will be absorbed and what is the distribution and also the biotransformation and excretion of the particular drug. And in the pharmacodynamic interactions, we will be studying how the drug will be interacting with the receptors and uh, how is the sensitivity, whether it is binding only to the cancer cell or it is binding to the normal cell also. So, those things can be studied and how the drug is transported. So, these things come under the pharmacodynamic interactions. And uh, another important thing is studying the target drug interaction. Usually, the binding sites of macromolecules are more hydrophobic in nature. Okay. So, this enhances the effect of an ionic interaction. For example, if you are having that target with the positive charge and uh, it would be nice if you have a drug with a negative charge, it can easily go and bind based on the ionic or electrostatic interactions. And as you know that most of your cells and nucleic acid, these have negatively charge. Okay. So, when you have the drug with the positive charge, it can easily go and bind through the electrostatic interaction. So, if an ionic interaction is possible, it is likely to be most important initial interaction as the drug enters the binding site. So, for example, you can see here there is cationic and anionic nanoparticles can penetrate and accumulate in tumors, but uh, this cationic particles diffuse fully throughout the tumor. So, you can see here, so this is anionic particles and this is the cationic particles and in the cationic particles, it is uh, fully diffused throughout the tumor and whereas anionic particles, it is not diffused properly when compared to the cationic particles. So, next important thing is uh, quantitative systems pharmacology. So, that is QSP. So, in this uh, we will be studying the systematic as well as holistic understanding of the 
drug action. And this is uh, divided into two categories like vertical integration and horizontal integration. Okay. So, here when you make a new drug, you will be purifying the compounds with the help of chemistry and we will be studying the effect of these purified compounds on the cells and then you will study the effect of this drug on the organs. Then you will study this effect of this drug on the animals and patients and then the populations. So, here in vertical integration you will be studying the interaction of drug with this group okay. and in the horizontal integration. So, you will be studying the interaction of drug with the target and how the uh, it will be interacting with the cellular networks and also what is the molecular mechanism of the particular drug. So, everything will be studied under the horizontal integration. And the next one is the monitoring the target drug interaction outcomes. Okay. So, when you give the drug we have to check whether there is any loss of therapeutic effect and what is the toxicity of the particular drug and whether any unexpected increase in the pharmacological activity and for example, it may give some beneficial effects for example, it can give additive or sometimes it may give antagonism effect and next thing is uh, you have to study the chemical as well as physical interaction. For example, you have to study whether uh, your drug is compatible in a fluid or syringe mixture. So, let us see what is the drawback of conventional therapy. So, in the conventional therapy, so you will be using the particular concentration of drug and uh, that particular concentration of drug will be taken at specified intervals of time. So, due to which what will happen there will be a fluctuation in the drug concentration level. You can see here, so the concentration of drug is going high and low. So, for an ideal dosage you have to take the concentration which is nearly matching with the minimum effective concentration that is MEC okay. and it should be maintained at a constant level throughout the treatment period. So, then only the therapeutic efficiency of the drug can be increased. So, let us see the various nanopharmacological targets. So, under this you will be studying about uh, what is slow release nanopharmacology and what is control release nanopharmacology and also we will be studying about the bio barrier penetration nanopharmacology. So, first we will see what is slow release nanopharmacology. So, here the slow release nanopharmacology studies the question on how to realize the slow release and influence of slow release on the drug metabolism and therapeutic effects. So, you can see here this is a non stabilized uh, uh, carrier. So, where the drug is releasing very rapidly. So, when the drug is released in more concentration what will happen is like uh, it will be removed by the uh, reticulo endothelial system that is RES reticulo endothelial system. So, it will be removed by your liver as well as spleen and in case of stabilized carrier your drug will be released very slowly okay. and uh, you can see here it can slowly release the drug and it can stay in the bloodstream for more time. So, before we study the control release nanopharmacology, let us see what is sustained release dosage form. Okay. So, here the drug relief system that are designed to achieve prolonged therapeutic effect by continuously releasing the drug over an extended period of time okay, after administration of single dose. And the basic goal of the therapy is to achieve steady state blood level that is therapeutically effective and non toxic for an extended period of time. So, the design of proper dosage uh, regimen is an important element in achieving this goal. So, let us see the difference between the control release and sustained release. So, the control delivery is the which delivers the drug at a predetermined rate for a specified period of time that is called as control drug delivery and here the control release is perfectly zero order release. Okay. That means, the drug release over time it is irrespective of concentration. And in case of sustained release, it is defined as the type of dosage form in which a portion of the drug that is the initial dose of drug will be released immediately and in order to achieve the desired therapeutic response more promptly. Okay. So, initially the drug will be released immediately to achieve the uh, desired therapeutic effect more promptly and then the remaining drug that is maintenance dose that will be released slowly and thereby achieving a therapeutic level which is prolonged and but not maintain constant level. Okay. So, this sustained release implies slow release of drug over a period of time and it may or may not be a control release. So, let us see the control release nanopharmacology. So, here the control release nanopharmacology studies how to realize the smart release of the drugs according to the therapeutic needs in the cellular and tissue micro environments. So, it can use a smart uh, nano carrier 
For example, we can make a smart nano carrier uh, which can release the insulin depends on the blood glucose level. If there is a more blood glucose level, it can release the insulin from the smart nano carrier system. So the next one is bio barrier penetration nanopharmacology. So here the bio barrier penetration nanopharmacology studies the capabilities of nano drugs to passing through the bio barriers. So the two important bio barriers is blood brain barrier and other one is air blood barrier. Okay. So to realize the treatment of some diseases where the traditional drugs cannot reach uh, because of the incapability to penetrate these bio barriers. So we can use the nano carriers which can easily cross the blood brain barrier and it can deliver the drug and which could be useful for uh, various therapeutic applications. So let us see what really happens when you take a drug. So this is a patient group and the same diagnosis and same prescription but you can see here different kind of effects. So to particular group the drug may be toxic but it is beneficial, to other group the drug is toxic and not beneficial and to the other group the drug is not toxic and not beneficial and to other group it will be not toxic and beneficial. So we have to uh, study the effect of the drug to different patient groups before we take it for uh, commercial application. So here the question is can we predict the drug efficacy and toxicity and uh, can we reuse the old drugs or can we design the personalized medicine for the particular patient's need. So what is a perfect drug? Okay. So here the all drugs have side effects but new drugs aim to provide beneficial effects with the minimum side effects. Okay. So how it can be achieved? So by identifying a new molecules or modifying the structure of the known molecules and testing these in the biological tissue or the whole body. So if you make any drug, the first thing we have to do the ADME evaluation. Okay. So based on that we have to design the drug. So what is ADME evaluation? So ADME means so it is abbreviation in pharmacokinetics and pharmacology for absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. So how the drug will be absorbed, how it is distributed in the body and what is the metabolism and how it will be excreted from the body. Okay. And these four criteria influence the drug levels and kinetics of drug exposure to the tissues and thus it influence the performance and pharmacological of the compound as a drug. For ADME evaluation, we can use a multi organ micro device instead of using the animal model. Okay. So we can use this multi organ micro device. So this multi organ micro device are the in vitro setup of animal cells to simulate the same physiological environment and study the effect of drug on different cells and organs. So here these systems are capable of simulating the human metabolism. So this is like a organ on a chip or human on a chip. So this chip will mimic like your human metabolism. So we can add the drug into this chip and we can study the effect of the drug on the particular organ. So you can see here this is an example of a human on a chip. So we can make this kind of chip, uh, we will study how the drug will be excreted. Okay. So this is like a kidney on a chip. And next one is we can also make a gut. Okay. So and we can study how the drug will be absorbed and also we can make the uh, liver on the chip and we can study the metabolism of drugs and we can make a bone marrow on the chip and uh, that will tell you the what kind of immune response it will the drug will induce. Okay. So here the devices have the potential to predict the potential toxic side effects with higher accuracy before a drug enters the expensive and time consuming phase of clinical trials. So before we take the drug to the uh, clinical trials which is time consuming and expensive, so we can use this lab on a chip or human on a chip and we can study the effect of this drug on this then we can take it further for the uh, clinical trial and commercial applications. So since the single organ device or testing platforms or tissues, so that can later be combined with other tissues within multi organ devices. And here the multi organ micro devices can be seen as a physical representation of physiologically based pharmacokinetic models in which the organs are represented by an actual compartment. Okay. So and these devices could be a way for the development of individualized or personalized medicine. So let us see the drug dispersion. So here the life saving drugs are one of the important ingredients in the latest medicines but it is unusual and excess usage could cause death. So the nano medicine has a successful application for the reduction of extra drugs from the human body and implantation of nano medicine devices could disperse drugs or hormones 
as required in people with chronic imbalance or deficiency stage. So, this nano medicine or nano carrier it can act like a smart delivery system and according to the need of the patient it can release the drug and it can save the person from the particular disease. So, let us see the difference between entrapment and encapsulation of drug. So, encapsulation of drug means it involves the surrounding the drug molecules with a solid polymer shell ok. So, this yellow color is a drug and it is surrounded by a polymer and entrapment means it involves the suspension of drug molecules within a polymer matrix. You can see here this yellow is a drug and this blue color is a polymer. So, the drug is entrapped between the polymer matrix. So, let us see the drug released by the diffusion. So, when the polymer absorbs water it swells in size ok and this swelling created voids throughout the interior polymer and the smaller molecules can escape through the voids at a known rate controlled by molecular diffusion ok. So, when you put this nanoparticle into water, so it will swell and it will release the drug slowly and we can control the release of this drug by simple cross linking reaction. So, based on the cross linking, so we can control the release of the drug, we can if you want the more release of drug at initial stage we can do it or if you want to release the drug slowly that also can be possible. And the major areas of development of nano medicine is uh, prevention and control and by using these nano materials we can early detect the any disease and also we can use it for various diagnostic applications and also we can make a multifunctional nano materials which can do the diagnostics as well as therapeutics simultaneously. So, let us see the summary of uh, checkpoints for nano medicine design and optimization ok. So, before we take this nano medicine for a clinical application we have to cross all these steps. The first thing is we will be studying the safety of nano material and in vitro and in vivo and we will be studying the biodistribution in in vitro and in vivo and we have to make sure that what is the drug and the imaging agent carrying capacity it can be theoretical or it can be in vitro studies and you will be studying the drug release rate in vitro and we will be studying the effect of this drug on the uh, cells then you will study the effect of this drug on the animal model and uh, uh, human applications in a particular group ok. So, then you will be taking it for commercial applications. So, each and every drug has to uh, cross through all those uh, steps ok. So, then only it can reach the market for commercial application. So, that is why each and every drug it is taking at least 10 to 15 years to reach the market. So, let us see the impact of nano in the medicines ok. So, let us see the comparison between the current strategies as well as nano strategies. So, if you want to screen a particular disease uh, by using the current methodology there may be chance for non specific markers and when you use the nano material it can go and bind only to the specific markers. And here we can do limited number of tests, but here we can do the large number of tests using this lab on a chip. And in case of diagnosis, like a macro scale site imaging by using the current methodology, but here we can use the whole body as well as it can be non invasive. In current strategy, we have to go for invasive technology, ok. And here, in case of treatment, we have to go for surgery or radiation, ok, and whole body pharmacokinetics. And here we can reduce that surgery it can be minimal uh, invasive or we can make a drug which can deliver to the particular target ok. So, the targeted delivery is possible and again for follow up we have to use the macro scale site imaging and in here then when you use the nano we can use the non invasive quantitative imaging and uh, we can also do the early diagnosis and the early follow up. So, let us see how we can target this drug to a particular organs. So, under this we are going to see how we are going to target this drug to the respiratory system and how we can target the drug to the brain and how we can target the drug to the eye as well as the neoplastic diseases. So, let us see how we can target the drug to the respiratory system. Uh, the dosing to the complete respiratory system uh, was possible previously by a specialized nebulizer and uh, dosing to the complete respiratory system has only been regarded as option for a very few narrow range of therapeutics. So, some of the disease uh, we have to deliver the drug to the respiratory system directly ok. So, in those cases we can make a inhalable nanoparticles or micro particles. So, that can reach the respiratory system and it can deliver the drug. So, here the particle loaded inhaled gas is if it is heavier it can penetrate deeper in the lungs and if it is lighter it can penetrate less deep ok. For example, the deposition occurs deeper in the lungs when particle loaded with sulfox drug ok when compared to the heliox drug. So, we can make this nanoparticle formulations for uh, 
vaccine delivery and gene therapy and also for various other drug delivery applications. So, we can make the inhalable nanoparticles. So, let us see how we can deliver the drug to the respiratory system. So, using the nebulizer, we can deliver this uh, inhalable nanoparticles to the person and this can reach the lungs and it can deliver the drugs. For example, it can be useful for uh, lung cancer or it can be useful for uh, other lung related diseases. So, we can use for uh, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis therapy. So, we can have the this lipid based carriers or polymeric nano carriers and uh, which can reach the lungs and it can kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis. And we can also have the protein and peptide based drugs to the respiratory system. So, that will decrease the irritation caused by the drug and also it will decrease the toxicity due to high initial doses of the drug and also it will uh, alter the immunogenicity of the protein and improve the taste of the product and also it will improve the self life of the product. So, let us see how we can deliver the drug to the brain. So, the problems of drug delivery to the brain is like uh, the relative impermeability of the blood brain barrier. Okay. So, that is mainly due to the tight junction between the capillary endothelial cells which are formed by cell adhesion molecules and approximately 98 percent of the small molecules and nearly all large molecules such as recombinant proteins or gene based medicines do not cross the blood brain barrier. So, that is a major problem for delivering the drug to the brain. So, most of the drugs it cannot cross the blood brain barrier. So, this blood brain barrier is formed by a network of endothelial cells as I told you earlier and it is impermeable to large molecular weight chemotherapeutic agents. So, but most of the diseases we have to send the drug to the brain. For example, uh, CNS disorder requiring uh, large molecules for drug therapy is Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease okay. and other disorders which need uh, small drug molecules are like depression and schizophrenia and chronic pain. So, these things need a small drug molecules. So, let us see how we can target the drug to the brain and uh, to bypass this blood brain barrier and to deliver the drug into the brain there are three different approaches. The first one is invasive approach, the next one is pharmacological approach and third one is physiological approach. The first one is invasive approach, in the invasive approach we have to inject the drug directly into the brain. So, let us see the pharmacological approach. So, in this pharmacological approach consists of modifying through medicinal chemistry. Okay, a molecule that is known to be active against CNS target to enable it to penetrate the blood brain barrier and here modification of drugs through a reduction in the relative number of polar group. So, when you reduce the polar groups in the particular drug, it will increase the transfer of the drug across the blood brain barrier. So, here mostly the lipid carriers are used for transporting the drugs to the blood brain barrier. So, here in this pharmacological approach like a formulation of drugs which facilitate the brain delivery by increasing the drug solubility and stability in the plasma. So, but the limitations are the modification necessary to cross the blood brain barrier often result in loss of the desired CNS activity and increasing the lipophilicity of a molecule to improve transport can also result in making it a substrate for p glucoprotein pump. Okay. So, when you modify the drug for uh, crossing this blood brain barrier what happens is it may lose its therapeutic activity or it may be removed by the p glycoprotein pump. So, let us see the physiological approach. So, physiological approach is recognized by the scientific community as the one with the most likely chance of success. So, here uh, the drug will be delivered to the uh, brain region by transporter mediated delivery, receptor mediated transcytosis and uh, receptor at the blood brain barrier. So, you can see here these hydrophilic molecules can be uh, cross the blood brain barrier using this transporters or a specific carrier endocytosis or it can use the paracellular pathway that is uh, the gap junction between these two cells. Okay. And uh, the lipophilic molecules can simply diffuse the blood brain barrier. Let us see an example how these nanoparticles can be useful for uh, imaging the brain tumor. So, this is a MRI photoacoustic uh, Raman imaging that is the MPR technique to delineate the tumor. So, here these nanoparticles can be intravenously injected into mouse bearing the brain tumor and these nanoparticles can circulate in the bloodstream and it diffuse through the disrupted blood brain barrier and this will be retained by the tumor. And this MPRs are too large to cross the intact blood brain barrier. So, it cannot be accumulated in the healthy brain and uh, you can see here this MPR is made up of uh, gold core and uh, Raman active layer and followed by you are having this silica shell and on the top you are having this 
GD coating that is a gadolinium coating so which could be useful for MRI imaging. So by using this nanoparticles we can do the uh, imaging at three levels like pre-surgery MRI and uh, surgery and also we can also evaluate after post surgery also. So let us see how we can deliver the drug to the eye. So in the ophthalmic preparation so it can be applied topically to the cornea or it can be instilled in the space between the eyeball and lower eyelid okay. So we can uh, use a solution but problem is it dilutes with the tear and wash away through the lacrimal apparatus and also we have to administer at frequent intervals and we can use a suspension and it need a longer contact time and it may cause irritation due to the particle size of the drug and we can use the ointment and again you need a longer contact time and uh, greater storage stability and it may produce a film over the eye and it will cause blurring vision and we can use the immersion for a drug delivery and uh, here it, it can have the prolonged release of drug from the vehicle but blurred vision and patient non complaints and uh, oil entrapment are the drawbacks and we can also use the gels and it is comfortable but uh, and again it is less blurred vision but the drawbacks are uh, mated eyelids and uh, no rate control on diffusion. So we can have a, a nano carriers which can have the controlled delivery system. So it will release the drug at a constant rate for longer time and it can have the enhanced corneal absorption and also drug without not serious side effects and it can be tolerated by the patient. So here the advantages are it will increase the ocular residence and uh, thus it will improve the bioavailability and also it gives the possibility for providing a prolonged drug release and thus a better efficacy and also uh, there is a lower incidence of visual and systemic side effects and it will increase the self life with respect to aqueous solution and uh, here we do not have to use the preservatives so thus reducing the risk of sensitivity reactions. So other advantages are like it will reduce the systemic side effects okay and that will reduce the other adverse side effects and uh, we can reduce the number of dosage so thus better patient complaints and also the administration of an accurate dose in the eyes which is fully retained at the administration site so that will improve the therapeutic efficiency. So we can deliver the drug to the eye uh, using these various carriers we can use the liposomes or niosomes okay and uh, we can also use the micro particles and nano particles. So it depends on the drug as well as depends on the disease which you are going to target we have to select the suitable carrier. So let us see an example so here you can see the example of uh, normal eye and the eye with glaucoma okay. So we can use a lipid based nano carrier which can deliver the drug to this and again uh, we can use this uh, lipid carrier for preventing the scar tissue formation after glaucoma filtration eye surgery. So we can prevent this uh, formation of scar by using this sustained SIRNA delivery against this spark. The spark is secreted protein acidic and rich in cysteine okay. So we can uh, reduce this spark protein expression with the help of SIRNA. So we can use this multi layered nanoparticles as a non viral vectors for SIRNA delivery. So we can have this kind of uh, multi layered uh, nanoparticles and which will carrying this uh, spark SIRNA. So this multi layered self assembly of SIRNA nano carriers so these are customizable and it is simple and solvent free system and this layer will be decomposed in cytoplasm and it will facilitate the release of the SIRNA for gene silencing okay. So this will be useful for preventing the uh, scar formation after the glaucoma surgery. So let us see how we can target the drug to the neoplastic disease, neoplastic means uh, cancer okay. So here the goal is to inject the treatment uh, far from tumor and uh, have a large accumulation in the tumor and minimal accumulation in the normal cells. So this uh, targeted delivery to tumors and cancer so I already discussed in uh, one of my previous lecture in detail so but briefly we see here how we can use this. So here uh, most of the failure in the cancer treatment is the tumor penetration okay. So the tumor penetration is a key issue for the successful chemotherapy and uh, most of the cases the drug cannot enter into the inside of the tumor location. So due to which what will happen this uh, the tumor will regrow. So to overcome this we can use the nanoparticles and this nanoparticle can pass through these interstitial spaces between the necrotic and uh, coincident cells 
and these tumor cells typically have larger interstitial spaces than healthy cells. Okay. So, the particles can collect in the center and uh, bringing therapeutics to kill the tumor from inside out. So, you can see here this nanoparticle can enter and only bind to the tumor cells and it can eradicate the tumor cells. And uh, these nanoparticles and to maximize the effectiveness the microenvironment of the tumor must be quantified and uh, the nano carrier should be developed specifically to target the tumor. So, that it can reach the uh, inner part of tumor and it can completely eradicate the tumor and it will prevent the reoccurrence of tumor. Okay. So, in this lecture we have learned uh, what is nanopharmacology and also we have learned what are the various nanopharmacological targets and how to target this drug to the particular organs. Okay. So, I will end my lecture here. I thank you all for listening to this lecture. I will see you all in another interesting lecture.